So WebGL is something that many developers dream of mastering, creating those immersive and animated WebGL scenes that we all love. But let's face it, WebGL can be complex, especially when it comes to the shaders and advanced effects. And that's where Unicorn Studio comes in. So Unicorn Studio is a basically a no-code WebGL editor that opens up a whole new world of possibilities for creators without diving into the heavy coding. So in this video, we will go and dive deep into how you can use this platform and how you can export the WebGL scenes into your Webflow project. So let's get started. So first of all, we will cover how things are working in Unicorn Studio and then we'll go ahead and break down all the animated scenes that are used in this web page. So Unicorn Studio is basically a layer based software where you can use this software to create unique and animated WebGL effects by stacking layers. And you can add different shaders and effects into those layers, which I'll show you in a minute. But what I like most about this uh, platform is that you can actually add and create your own custom shaders and effects. And uh, once you are in the pro plan, you can actually see what's going on behind the scenes. That means you can see all the WebGL codes that are already being used in the, in the existing shaders and filters. So once you go ahead and create your account, uh, you can see a similar interface to like this one right off the bat. And to create a new project, you just have to go here and create a new project and uh, it will give you a background so you can you can consider this as a canvas and you can go ahead here and modify the dimensions for the sake of this example i am using 1920 by 1080 pixel so at the top left corner here you can rename the project first webgl project or something and then we have the cursor uh the shape tools the text the image uh the 3d object and then we have finally the filters shaders and special effects so i'll cover this in a minute and let's just go ahead and create one simple webgl hover animation now so we will go ahead and select the background and uh, like i have said before uh you can select the layers and all the settings and properties of that specific layer would be showing in the right hand panel so like i have uh, i have selected here the background and we will go ahead and take a little dark blue color something like that and then we will go ahead and add one text layer and let's say Hover, and you can just basically go and drag it like this way and and we can see all the uh, properties and the settings and the parameters related to this text layer is showing here in the right hand panel and the best way to learn everything is by tweaking and uh, testing out uh, every property here so we will go ahead and uh, make it a little bold and change the color to like proper white then what we'll do we will go ahead and add one filter uh, called diffuse and uh, we will go ahead and just reduce the radius over here and uh, make it track the mouse and momentum is 100 percent so and the radius uh, let's make the radius a little less 38 percent 34% and uh, make the easing to like something is in cubic so you can see that we are already getting somewhere so all right let's just go ahead and add another effect call 3d bulge or pinch so I will make this also interactive and uh, reduce the amount like 50 and uh, let's reduce the intensity to like 25 20 percent and make it 50. whoa all right we are getting some cool effects over here and we will just go ahead and add a little 3d axis tilt here in the text layer like 
ten percent or eleven percent. All right, we are already uh, getting some really really cool hover effects. So and then we, what we will do? We will go ahead and add another cool thing called beam, and we will just go ahead and instead of line, we will make it a ring. Reduce the thickness, scale it a little bigger and reduce the thickness to like something like this and make it animated you can obviously go ahead and uh, reduce the speed over here in this beam or you can increase the speed let's make it like 35 percent or 20 let's make it 30 percent all right this is already looking really good and to export this uh, so before moving to export, uh, you uh, let me tell you that you can learn more about Unicorn Studio from its help doc, which is basically a Notion document, which covers most of the things. And also they have provided a unique and beginner friendly tutorials in their YouTube channel, which I will link it down below. To export this whole scene into Webflow project, what do you have to do? You just have to copy one JavaScript code. Uh, this one and paste it before the body tag of your page settings let's go ahead and quickly do that and let's save it and now in the unicorn studio dashboard you just have to you just have to go ahead and hit export and you will get one project id so let's go ahead and copy this so once you go ahead and copy this project id from the unicorn studio dashboard you have to move to the webflow designer and uh, you have to paste one attribute this one and for the value you have to add the project id and that's it and uh, you have to go here and publish the project and that's it your webgel scene is up and running in the live site so imagine building this whole scene in uh, WebGL or by using 3JS, it will take years. All right, now that we have the basic idea of how things work in Unicorn Studio, let us go ahead and uh, break down all the animations that are used in this uh, web page. First, we will go ahead and uh, try to break down this animation over here. So this is a pre-made animation that I found here in the Unicorn Studio. And uh, it looks kind of complicated, but it is not really. So to show you, we'll quickly go ahead and disable all the layers here. So now that uh, this everything is uh, disabled, uh, this is the background, which has a solid color of black. Then we have something called beam, which we have already used before. So instead of uh, circle, we are using here uh, this point and um, you can see a subtle mouse movement over here, uh, which is because of this uh mouse track is set to 10 percent and uh, on top of that we have the gradient map so to access this effect you just have to go here and uh, once you go ahead and type this gradient you will find this gradient map effect and you can uh, you can set this gradient uh from already existing pre-made gradient or you can create your uh, custom gradient as well then we have this uh, noise effect which is basically creating this uh, dramatic noise distortion uh, effect we will we can find this uh, as well uh, sorry I know I, this one you just have to bring it over here and obviously you can go ahead and tweak it uh, to your desired uh, level and you just have to hit here play to get this constant movement effect then we have this blinds this is also a pretty interesting one uh, so this is distort uh, this is called blind and uh, which is basically which is basically giving us this glass distortion effect so instead of just blind you can choose tiles or radial or circle or square then uh, okay quickly make it to blinds and then we have uh, on top of that we have this detour effect which is basically adding this uh, grain of some sort and it looks pretty cool and you just have to go ahead and export this and add it to your webflow project then coming to the next uh, we have this uh, mouse trail effect and this pixelated effect 
to create this uh, we will just quickly go ahead and just delete this to show you so this is a background and we will go ahead and just bring one image like this and make it uh, the size of our artboard and uh, then we will have to add one effect called mouse trail and yeah uh, here in the type you just have to add motion blur to get this uh, motion blur effect and uh, this pixelated effect to get this all right so this is pretty simple and you can obviously tweak this and make it more prominent and unique so yeah that is it uh and i haven't added any effect to this uh, i will probably gonna go ahead and add some parallax over here so yeah that is it uh, for the video and hope you found this video helpful and if you found this video helpful make sure to give it a like and more complex animation and um, in-depth tutorial are coming up on the way and uh, see you in the next one